Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Teman-teman semuanya selamat datang di Jembatan Dakwah Dan kali ini ada sebuah video dari Dr. Sabil Ahmad ya Dan di sini sering kali Dr. Sabil Ahmad itu memberikan apa open mosque nah, Artinya tuh masjid terbuka Jadi masjid itu terbuka untuk semua orang yang ingin bertanya Yang mau bertanya tentang miskonsepsi atau kesalahpahaman yang ada dalam pikiran orang-orang barat tentang Islam. Nah, ini adalah dialog yang menarik karena pertanyaan-pertanyaan ini tuh kritis dan pertanyaan-pertanyaan ini tuh sering dilontarkan kepada orang-orang, sering dilontarkan oleh media dan dijawab dengan bijak oleh Dr. Sabil Ahmad. Apa jawaban dari Dr. Sabil Ahmad? Simak video ini selengkapnya hingga akhir agar kalian tidak salah paham. Selamat menonton dan semoga bermanfaat. Mari kita mulai Why are all the terrorists Muslim? Oh, all right. What was that question? All right. So the question is why are all the terrorists Muslims? So that's a misconception, that's a stereotype people may have about Islam, about Muslims, about extremism. So the simple answer is this, terrorism is an act. It can be done with a person of any faith or no faith. Islam does not have a monopoly on it. Really important. You know, I'm from Chicago, in Highland Park in Chicago, 4th of July, there was a mass shooting that took place taking the life of six or seven individuals and many many other casualties i say that was an act of terrorism done not by a muslim and i would say that the january 6 what happened last year or two years ago according to many that was also an act of terrorism not a single muslim was involved in it number three there was a study by the fbi a 25 year study they found out that in the USA, 94% of the acts of terrorism, they are done by someone from a non-Islamic faith. So it's a misconception that people, they say, okay, fine, not every Muslim is a terrorist, but every terrorist is a Muslim. That's false, that's wrong, that's a myth, because data proves something else. In the same way, what I can say is, that Muslims overall, and Christians overall, right, and humans overall, we are good people. There are always some bad apples in the followers of any faith. So we should never ever judge Islam uh, because of the acts of some misguided Muslims. If someone is going against what Islam is saying, we should condemn it. In the same way, I say to my Muslims over here, we should never ever judge Christianity or the Bible or Jesus, peace be upon him, based upon the acts of some misguided Christians, right? The bad apples of the society. All the terrorism and the extremism going on, right? Also in history. I always say this, the Crusaders, when they killed 300,000 innocent people, they're not representing the Bible, biblical principles. The slave traders, millions of slaves, unfortunately, the transatlantic slave trade, they don't represent Christianity or the Bible or Jesus. The genocide of the Native Americans, right? Millions of people eradicated, does not represent Bible or Christianity or Jesus, peace be upon him, right? The Spanish Inquisition, people were forcefully converted by the Bible believers in Spain, in Europe, for many, many centuries, does not represent what? Christianity, the Bible, or Jesus, peace be upon him. What represent Christianity would be the biblical principles. In the same way, what represent Islam would be not be the bad apples, but the Islamic principles. And what are those principles? The Quran defines this. Once you get a copy of the Quran, you can look this up. It says in chapter 5 of the Quran, verse number 32, to be exact. Chapter 5, verse number 32, God is saying, God is speaking to all of humanity and God is saying that saving one innocent life is like saving the life of all of humanity. So God is uh, equating one life with the life of all of humanity. Then God says that taking one innocent life is like taking the life of all of humanity. 
And God does not say the life of a Muslim, a Jew, a Christian, the atheist. In the eyes of God, every life is equal, every soul is equal, every blood is sacred. So that is how Islam values a life. Even in a war, right? Even in a war, Islam Muslims, we are supposed to avoid war at all expense unless and until somebody is imposing war on us. So then every person has a God-given right to defend themselves. Like for example, 2 a.m. in the morning, if you get a knock at the door and when you look out, you can find out that there are people with chains and guns and knives, they're trying to harm you and your family. You're not going to say, you know what, let me just go to sleep. What you would do is, you would make a plan to defend yourself. Maybe a baseball bat, right? Maybe you'll call 911. If you have an alarm system, you'll push it right away. You want to defend yourself. So Islam has also given that right to the Muslims to defend themselves. So it says in the Quran, chapter 2, verse number 190, right? Chapter 2, verse number 190, that if Fight in the cause of God for those who are fighting against you. Means somebody is imposing war on you. God is saying that you have the right to defend yourselves. But then God goes one step further. God says that even in that self-defense, do not go to extreme. Because God does not love the extremist. That is Quran. So then you may be thinking, okay, what does it mean not to go to extreme? God also defines it. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, during one of his battles, he found out that one of the women, she was killed. He became really angry. He called his, uh, the, the Muslim soldiers and he told them that even in a war, do not kill women and children. That means do not touch, harm or kill non-combatants. To such a degree that Islam is so careful about avoiding any harm to the, to, to the non-combatants. So there is no such thing as carpet bombing in Islam. There is no such, th such thing as Hiroshima Nagasaki in Islam. Even if the enemy uh, harms your civilian population, Islam does not give the Muslim the right to harm or kill the innocent civilians of the enemy forces. That's how careful Islam is. So if some people, out of their own shortcomings and lack of knowledge and emotions, if they are harming other people, we have to condemn it and not Islam. So if anyone who would like to know what Islam is, you know, Fox News and fake news would not be the source, unfortunately. I would recommend them really highly to pick up a copy of the Quran that defines uh, about the ethics of war, uh, that also defines how we should deal with each other. So when we look into the Quran, we can find out that it is built upon morality and justice, right? And unity of humanity and solutions for humanity. And that is going to give us the lasting peace. So the question that people may have is wrong. Not every Muslim is a terrorist. I'm a Muslim living in peace and harmony with my neighbors. He's a Muslim, right? One of the credible Muslims. The Muslims are out there. There are many physicians over here in the USA, 35,000 plus physicians, Muslims, they have 150 plus free clinics benefiting humanity. So these are all the Muslims, alhamdulillah, as we say, uh, that who are there as a force of goodness, ambassadors of peace in this society. So picking up a copy of the Quran, reading it for your own sake, for your own education, would be the best way to dispel not only that misconception, but any misconception anyone may have about Islam. Dan itulah video Dr. Sabil Ahmad yang bisa kami berikan kepada kalian semuanya Semoga bermanfaat Dr. Sabil Ahmad ini adalah salah satu um, speaker yang sangat luar biasa Mempunyai logika yang sangat luar biasa Kalau kalian ngikutin Dr. Sabil Ahmad Dan bahkan ketika beliau itu dimarah-marahin sama orang itu Beliau cuma duduk gini Terus sambil diem, sambil dengerin Terus nyari poinnya, habis itu di counter argumennya dan ketika di counter orang itu malah marah makin marah-marah karena mereka, karena dia tidak bisa membuktikan dan tidak memberikan dalil. Jadi dia marah-marah, tapi Dokter Sabil Ahmad tuh masih tetap sabar. Itu kerennya Dokter Sabil Ahmad itu. Masya Allah dan semoga orang-orang yang berdakwah di luar sana uh, maupun di dalam negeri sini senantiasa mendapatkan uh, keselamatan, senantiasa mendapatkan kesehatan dan diberikan 
berkah yang melimpah Allah, oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala karena menyebarkan Islam ya rahmatan alamin. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin dan semoga kita senantiasa diberikan jalan yang lurus, jalan yang selalu um, ditunjukkan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Jadi semoga ibadah-ibadah kita diterima dan apa yang kita lakukan menjadi salah satu pemberat di pemberat amal di yaumil akhir nanti. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Terima kasih telah menonton video ini hingga akhir. Kalau ada komentar silahkan tulis di kolom komentar di bawah dan semoga kita ber- bisa berdiskusi, berdiskusi dengan baik dan berdiskusi dengan uh, kepala yang dingin tentunya. Terima kasih sampai jumpa pada video dakwah berikutnya. Assalamualaikum.